Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Sabah, and today we're investigating, or at least start investigating, a fundamental concept in risk management, that is backtesting of value at risk calculations. And the methods we'll learn today are very much generalizable to any value at risk technique, but we'll investigate it based on the simplest value at risk there is, that is variance covariance uh, VR or parametric normal VR. But again, bear in mind, it's generalizable to any sort of value at risk you can envision. And today we're investigating the simplest and most intuitive, arguably, backtesting procedure, which is standard coverage test that utilizes the logic of proportion difference Z-test and applies it to value at risk historical performance. So here we have got daily returns of BlackRock over a five-year period, which is something that um, risk management authorities um, argue uh, for using five years worth of data for backtesting of any risk management uh, model. And we have got daily returns here. We have calculated them just as uh, total return uh, index today over total return index yesterday minus one, nothing fancy. And now we can plug in our uh, value at risk calculation formula and our value at risk value and then figure out whether our uh, model is adequate, whether it withstands scrutiny by our backtesting procedure. So here we can first input our sample size, which is just count returns. We have got 1257, again, very typical of five years worth of data. Then we need to choose uh, which confidence level uh, to estimate valid risk for. Let's start at something um, quite um, large, like 10%, and then we can automatically change it and uh, see how it affects the results. Then we need to calculate average daily return, which is easiest to do using product one plus returns to the power of one over the count, the sample size minus one. That gives us a daily return of an average five basis points. And the volatility is just the sample standard deviation of our daily returns. And now our variance covariance VER can be calculated as usual. Return plus the normal standard inverse distribution of our confidence level 10% times the volatility we've just estimated, resulting in a variance covariance VER of minus 2.45%. And now we have to test the following. We are calculating a 10% VER, mind, which means that we expect this particular VER to be violated around 10% of the time. If, on the other hand, empirically, over the last five years, it has been violated uh, significantly more often or significantly less often, then it will imply that our VR model is inadequate. In this case, as we're using parametric normal VR, that would mean that parametric normal VR is inadequate for BlackRock returns for this particular confidence interval. So how can you assess something like that? Well, the most straightforward way would be to use an indicator variable that would um, show whether VR has been violated or not on a particular sample day. So here we say if our return is less than the VR we have just obtained, then there has been a violation of our VR threshold. So we input one and zero otherwise. And then we can sum the number of violations in this column, seeing that uh, we have got 89 violations. If you think about it for a bit, uh, you would expect 10% of 1,257, so around 126 violations, which means that our 10% VR is violated quite a bit less often than you would expect, which could signal that the model is inadequate. However, we need to test for it rigorously. So here we need to evaluate the proportion of violations that we've got from our data, which is violations over the sample size. And we can see that despite expecting 10% of violations, we only got 7% of violations. And now the hero of today, the proportion difference Z-test comes into play. So the difference is just our 
proportion that we've got here minus the uh, proportion that we were expecting, so 10%. So we see that our uh, empirical proportion is almost 3% percentage points lower than the expected proportion. The standard error can be quite easily estimated using the square root of the expected proportion alpha times 1 minus expected proportion alpha over the sample size, so 1257. That gives us a standard error of 0.85%. That can be translated into a Z-stat of minus 3.45, and again, that's quite a large Z-stat that signals quite high statistical significance, but if you're unsure, you can always convert it into a p-value using a two-tailed test, two times one minus the normal standard distribution, absolute value of the Z-stat because two-tailed, and one for cumulative which gives us a p-value of 6 basis points, so 0.06%, which is way less than any confidence threshold that uh, is used in the literature, meaning that our deviation from the confidence interval of 10% is statistically significant, meaning that this particular model is inadequate for BlackRock returns. And the interpretation is quite simple. If we change our confidence interval, for example, let's say we want a 1%, VER, then we can see that despite expecting around 13 violations, so 1% uh, of 1,257, 21 violations occurred, and here we see the reverse picture. The proportion that we observed is much higher than the proportion we expected, resulting in a positive and statistically significant Z-stat, meaning that while our VR is uh, too conservative for 10%, it's way too lenient, not conservative enough, for 1%. And that's quite typical of thin-peaked, heavy-tailed distributions. They have a very thin peak and very heavy tails, which means that at higher confidence levels, your uh, VR would uh, overestimate the losses. At a very low alpha, your losses would be drastically underestimated. And if we look for something and if we look for something in between, like 5%, we'll see that here is where the results are approximately the same. We have got 4.14% uh, of empirical violations corresponding to 5% of theoretical violations, which does not generate a significant p-value, meaning that at 5%, the normal VR does its job reasonably well. And that's how you apply the standard coverage test inspired by the proportion difference z-test to evaluate the properties or the applicability of VR using the simplest backtesting there is. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.